Are you ready to take your first steps towards financial freedom by investing in property? Whether you're a first-time investor or you started your portfolio but need some help continuing to grow, 2022 REB Buyers Agent of the Year and Rising Star finalist Lachlan Vidler and his team at Atlas Property Group are here to help. As experts in property investment, Lachlan and his team are ready to help you take your next step in growing your portfolio. By completing the research, sourcing and negotiations, Lachlan goes the extra mile to find you a high-performing investment property. Visit atlaspropertygroup.com.au to book in your discovery call absolutely free of charge. This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. G'day, how are you going? Phil Tarrant, host, Smart Property Investment Show. Hope you're well. Hope you got off the floor recently, last Tuesday, I think it was, when uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia decided to raise the uh, official cash rate. And uh, a lot of uh, borrowers now are seeing that translate into uh, higher borrowing. So, uh, with their home loans, and that's got to be expected. Um, wouldn't have surprised me that the banks didn't move uh, pretty fast to um, push those rates upwards and get used to it. There's going to be a rising rate environment uh, over the period ahead of us. So we've been chatting a lot about it on the Smart Property Investment Show, also on smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Not really the focus of today's uh, discussion. Go and check it out online. Get some sense for it all. You can start doing and what the smart investors are doing right now is they're doing those calculations, those sums to work out what uh, the impact uh, of rises to uh, their mortgage rates will be. And if you've got a million bucks in debt and it goes up 0.25%, we're well, in for about another two and a half thousand bucks uh, a year. So use that as a bit of a um, a place to start. Uh, I'd be looking at, and the secret is being able to hold on to your properties uh, in any rate environment. So make sure you've got those buffers in place. But a lot more of investors are going to start now really looking at, rather than the capital growth play, at the actual yield play of their properties. Uh, how they can continue to drive uh, forward as a property investor and potentially lift their rents uh, in an upwards market. And that's happening right now. Again, we've been chatting about it at length right now on smartproperinvestment.com.au. There is uh, the lowest vacancy rates uh, probably in the nation's history. We're all over the place. It's just not like a handful of places where you're having just nearing a 0% occupancy. It's largely prevalent right across Australia right now. So there's a lot of upward pressure on rents. And I know a lot of property investors are increasing their rents at the moment. Uh, and you should be focused on this as part of the cash component of your portfolio. Rates may be going up, but if you can offset that with uh, increases to your rents, uh, that's going to help at least where uh, some of the burden in those increased rates. You need to be at this right now. You need to be concentrating on it right now. Don't put your head in the sand and ignore it. Uh, get stuck in, do a full portfolio review. I'm doing it right now, and I'll share that in a moment uh, soon on uh, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Speak to your property manager. Your property manager, this is what you're paying a percentage of your rents uh, to look after you. If they're not recommending uh, changes or reviews of your rents, if they're not being proactive in terms of letting you know when leases are coming up for new rules and the plans around it, they're probably not doing their job well enough. But that's a big call. Property managers are the lifeblood of all property investors, myself included. I lean on my property managers. I'm very fortunate that I've got a good suite of property managers that support me, uh, who are the positive and proactive property managers. They're not the other ones I was chatting about. And if you don't have a good relationship with your property manager, maybe maybe it's time to rethink it. But a lot of this is outside of my uh, skills and capabilities. I am a property investor. I do speak to property managers, but there's certain people who know a lot more about it than me. One of them is Tom Richards. He's a co-founder of Managed App, which is a platform which is changing the way in which property managers serve their investors. And from what I under, understand, they're getting a lot more property investors asking their property managers, make sure they're using uh, Managed because it's got a whole bunch of different features in there that you might not know about. Tom, how are you going? You well? Yeah, well, thanks, mate. Thanks for me back. It's been a while since we've done one of these together. Yeah, it is. And, and apologies for the long-winded uh, introduction. We're getting to the the nitty-gritty of uh, property management. But by way of disclosure at the front end, I really like what these guys are doing. They're completely transforming the way uh, rents are received and distributed uh, across Australia. Uh, they've now, well, they've in- introduced a whole new way for that to happen with direct and automated payments, which means that property managers don't need a trust account anymore, which has completely changed the status quo. I like it so much. I invested in this business. It's pretty good. So just want to let you all know that, but so that shouldn't cloud me giving Tom Richards a hard time about property management. Tom, is it a good time to be a property manager? It's uh, it's always a good time to be a property manager, Bill. <laughs> There's always <laughs> something to be fixed. 
there's always a, a landlord to, that has a bunch of questions um, and there's always a property manager needed to answer them. But uh, Manage App is designed to make that job easier. It's uh, it's what we set out to do. We understand the value of those PMs in this space. Uh, as you said, it's uh, they're crucial. And in terms of running a, a sound investment, getting the best possible return, they need to be there. And one of the really difficult things about this industry is it is a tough job. Uh, the tech wasn't there supporting them. It's uh, a really tough grind getting all of these moving parts together as a property manager so we built this system to try and ease their day make it a little bit more automated and connect them a little bit closer with their clients i was chatting with uh, the head of uh, the real estate institute of australia oh, it's a little time ago now but um he said something to me that that shocked me and really caught my attention and for those listeners that uh, don't know we also have a big platform inside of um the business of real estate called realestatebusiness.com.au and he said that the property management industry, and by memory, maybe I got this slightly wrong, was about 10,000 people too light in terms of we need more property managers and we can't find property managers. It's a it's a tough job. It, it's it's a tough job. And, and the guys and girls who are property managers do property investors such a good service. What, why is it do you think that property management has become such a, a, a tough game for a lot of people and a lot of businesses? For me, I always found that agencies treated the property managers as kind of the salesperson's ugly cousin. It's uh, it's not a loved role and it's not a well-rewarded role. Um, it's very difficult to reward a property manager as well. You think about sales, they sell a property, you've got a dollar figure and you've got a commission and they get big bonus checks and, uh, and they get all this, this marketing and, and media around it. Property manager goes and does something, coordinates a repair or something that could save several thousand dollars for an owner they get very little recognition, right? So the first thing for me is that there is no real reward for a PM. Um, They fly under the radar both internally and externally and they don't get that job recognition. Um, The second thing is just the sheer quantity of tasks they have to do on a daily basis. It's There's just loose ends everywhere. Um, There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of different people you have to appease, a lot of different people you've got to bring together and coordinate. It's an extremely tough job. So I think those two things combined not being rewarded financially or or, or in, in terms of recognition within the business, and then the workload on top of that, it doesn't make for a great outcome for someone wanting to do that job. Yeah, I, I, I get it, Tom. And, and uh, I know uh, you and your team at Manage are looking to to support, um, you know, making that a much better and smoother transition or process for for property managers to deliver uh, to investors by uh, leveraging tech. But I reckon we've got to do something more. I know I can sometimes be a bit, short with my property manager, you only ever really, to your point, you only ever really hear it from your property manager when there's a problem, all right, and which normally as a property investor means money. So maybe that's got something to do with it. Maybe we've got to have I love my property manager day or something or other. We've got to do something around this, I reckon, Tom, uh, to property manager appreciation day. Uh, we need to get more guys and girls into the, the very important business of, uh, of property management. And uh, for those of you who aren't too familiar with it, Tom, you probably get me a bit closer than this, about 70% of all investment properties in Australia managed by a property manager. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Well, there's been some uh, some articles of indicating that that self-managed sector is growing. But from what we see, it is the bulk of the market is still under the control of a, of a real estate agent and, and a property manager, and they're, they're doing their best. So when you look at the current market, uh, Tom, and um, some of the challenges investors are, are facing, a property manager can be a real enabler for, for getting a better uh, outcome on your uh, investment properties. I want to get into that. We'll just go to a quick break. Stay with us, everyone. Uh, Tom Richards will chat us through that when we come back Back in a moment. Ever wondered how you can invest like the top 1% of Australian property investors? Henderson Advocacy has been at the forefront of helping everyday Aussies improve their financial freedom. So if you're a savvy investor or someone just starting out on their property journey, give Henderson Advocacy a call today. Head to www.henderson.com.au. Don't invest alone. Invest smarter. Welcome back, everyone. It's Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show with Tom Richards from Manage. Now, Tom, in this environment where, as I mentioned before in my intro, Rents are going up, the cost of living is going up, rates are going up, uh, everything seems to be going up at the moment. It can be a, quite a daunting situation for a lot of uh, investors where they don't really know what to do or where to focus their attention. As I said, a good portfolio review is a good place to start. But how do you think a property manager can best support investors in this environment that we're in right now? 
Yeah, there's a number of different ways that a property manager is connected to the property, much more so than the investor. And the first is physically. They actually see it. I mean, when was the last time you went to one of your investments, mate? You don't really get to see them very often, whereas a property mate, manager- Mate, I've never been to any of the investment properties I have in Queensland. I've got quite a few there. I've never, I've never physically seen any of them. So you're relying on pictures and uh, and a report from those property managers that are going out there and physically inspecting the property. So you rely on them to accurately describe the property and what needs to be done. Um, and uh, I feel a lot of property managers don't do that that effectively. They not intentionally. They definitely take great photos. They go out. They do the reports. They do what they're supposed to be doing, but they don't necessarily look at it from an investment perspective. So, what could be replaced? What would add further value to the property? What would be much more attractive to tenants if I was suddenly to lose Tom the tenant tomorrow? If I was to put it on domain and real estate, what's going to make that property stand out opposed to all the other ones that are on the market? So they're the kinds of things that I feel that property managers can start doing to help that investor see a better return, see uh, less vacancy when the, when the time comes to find a new tenant, and also give them a bit of advice around uh, around connecting with someone like an appreciation expert. Right? We're approaching end of financial year. Someone may have had an oven in there that's 10 years old, no longer um, able to claim. Um, so why not go ahead and get some quotes, connect them with somebody that they know can give them some advice and do that report and maximise that tax position as well. So little things like that that are often overlooked. And how do you know if your property manager is a good property manager? For me, it's communication is the big one. Um, and also, as you said before, communication when I want it. So a lot of property managers, as you said, they just call when something's wrong. It's very reactive in terms of the approach. Uh, for me, I see some of the best PMs in the business speaking to an individual owner and saying, hey, Phil, how often do you like to be communicated with? And are you happy for me to touch base at X interval? And when I do, what do you want me to tell you? And then I know exactly what Phil wants. I know when to contact Phil. I know what to contact Phil about. I know that Phil, you yourself, you know all about the depreciation and, uh, and maximizing values and all those kinds of things. So you might want something completely different to Tom, the investor, who might be a first home buyer, just bought a property, I don't really know much about that stuff. So we're going to have a very different conversation between those two investors. So I think that personalized approach is a really important part. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and I've got... Um... A number of different property managers, uh, and largely now, I just you say I've, I've trained them well, right? They know how best to uh, get an answer from me, and and every investor is different. But you know, send me an email. I'm probably not going to look at it. You know, I've got emails go to a particular email address. If something's important, they know the best way to get a hold of me is not to call me, is to text me uh, and say I need to talk to you about this straight away. Otherwise, it's going to cost you money. Guess what? I, I respond pretty quickly to it. So you know, having that that open channel of collaborative communication, I think, is absolutely critical. Uh, with a um, uh, with your property manager, and you need to be quite self reflective of that as well. You got to remember that property managers deal with Tom sometimes a couple of hundred properties, maybe a few more per per property manager. So they're busy uh, and and they're very results orientated. So the best way you can be the best investor you can be is be responsive and reactive to your property manager, so they can do their job properly. And, and no doubt you'd have property managers cheering in the wings there if they heard the property investor. Yeah, exactly. So like that because they probably only normally get berated. I've, some I've seen some investors speak horribly to their property managers. Yeah, and that, that's part of the issue. I mean, you've publicised recently, you, you've seen all the articles around the churn of property managers in the industry, and I think that's a big part of it, um, not feeling secure in the job, being abused, all those kinds of things. Just a little bit of respect goes both ways, obviously. Mm. But I, in terms of reaching somebody and communication, just something simple as, Phil, how do you like me to contact you? Do you want an SMS? Do you want me to give you a call? Do you want me to send you an email? When I do send you the email with the broken hot water system, do I need to come and ask you how many quotes you want, then go back and do it and come back again and burn another week? Or do I know immediately that Phil, don't contact me if, it's, if you don't have three quotes? And then the moment I contact you by SMS, Phil, I've got three quotes, call me when you're free, run through them on the phone and we get it done. So understanding you as an investor is the best way to get that result and also keep that relationship nice and healthy. So considering the market we're moving into of, of rising rates uh, and also uh, rising rents and who knows what will happen once uh, migration returns and there's even going to be more pressure put on uh, rental accommodation in Australia and we're not building enough properties as it is right now. What, as a property investor, what do you think I should be most concerned about uh, in relation to the management of my investment property for the foreseeable future? My major concern if, if I was um, ever looking at that at the market at the moment would be what will happen with rents? Mm -hmm. uh, where are they going to go? Um, if my costs are increasing, where are rents going? But also making sure that if more properties are coming on the market, that mine stands out. 
I need to make sure that my property is perfect. I know whenever I look at something advertised, people aren't really taking much pride in their investment property. You see it a lot. It was very much a um, an investor's market for a while there. You had um, a lot of properties on the market that hadn't been updated in years um, and they were still getting big money for them. Now, if that changes, I think those investors will get a rude shock and ones that aren't looking after those properties in terms of, of not being able to secure a new tenant and sitting there vacant. So I'd want to just make sure that my property was always priced well. I'd look at rent reviews, make sure I'm always in line with the market and also make sure that if for some reason my tenant does leave, I'm not going to have any problem finding a new one. Because for me, 200 bucks a month or whatever you said that that increase in, um, in repayments would be, that's going to hurt if you are also looking at two, three, four, even longer weeks in terms of vacancy at your at your full weekly amount. It's going to add up very quickly. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And uh, I know a lot of people are concerned about it right now. And it's about renting your property. Well, there's a number of reasons why you should look after your uh, investment property and your property manager should be supporting you through it is that you're either going to have stickier, st- stickier um, uh, tenants, which means you're not cycling over them each time. And if you cycle over uh, tenants, it means you're always paying listing fees and first months, first week's rent and all that. So, so it's more expensive, uh, number one. Uh, number two, um, you want them happy and engaged. Uh, there's going to be a whole generation of renters moving forward. So you need to make sure that they've got a nice living experience in the properties that you do own. Uh, and your property manager should be able to help you making sure your investment property is priced com- competitively, but you know, always err on the side of making it nice rather than trying to cut a few dollars out of it because it'll catch up with you in the long run, right? Definitely, definitely. But having that, sometimes that respect between the the agency and the tenant goes a really long way in terms of how the tenant feels in the property. And it even translates to how they treat the property physically in a lot of instances. Um, If you make it feel like it's their own, um, they're going to treat it like it's their own. And the best way do you think for property investors to to add 10, 20 bucks, 30 bucks a week through um, uh, some sort of proven on their investment property? What would be the, the two or three top line things that can really make a big bang on the bottom line? Yeah, the really quick items are the ones that you can do in a couple of days, things like painting, basic electrical, like light fittings, those kinds of things, um, and also flooring. Um, if you've got carpet in there and it's old, get somebody in there and just re-carpet. So there's sort of the top three basic ones, um, the, the fixtures and finishes, carpet, paint. Um, but then you can move on to things like uh, appliances. If you've got a, an old cooktop, cracked and broken, charred, whatever it might be, um, finding something online and having it delivered and installed can not take very long. If you find, make sure you've got the right sizes, your property manager should be communicating your 60 centimetre cooktop, whatever it might be. They might even be able to go on a marketplace or something similar within their technology to help you find the best possible price for a replacement. But those kinds of things go a long way. And they're not that expensive in the scheme of things. No, I'm, I'm doing a little cosmetic reno on a place right now. And uh, you'd be surprised... Uh, how quickly you can transform a property with largely little cost. And a lot of it is sweat equity. You know, if you're willing to give up a weekend and you paint some walls and do some tidy, whether you can grout some tiles, like a lot of this stuff is inverted commas unskilled. If you're starting to light fittings and fixtures and stuff, you need to get a trained um, tradesperson in there. But the other stuff is sweat equity. So give it a red dot go. You can learn so much from YouTube, even tiling. I was about to say YouTube. That's uh, <laughs> it's, it's a source of truth for every DIYer. You can jump on there and learn just about any uh, simple craft. You, you can. And uh, a lot of it is just cleaning as well. So uh, some really good tips there. Tom, I want to ask you about manage specifically because I know you're doing some exciting stuff. We'll just go to another break. Stay with us back in a moment. It's time to get help. Interest rates are increasing. Inflation has hit an extraordinary 5.1% and the chance to secure a golden egg property is getting narrower by the day. Dragon from Buyers Agency Australia has been presenting the facts and helping property investors make smarter, well-informed, educated decisions in property for years. So what are you waiting for? Get in touch with Dragon today at www.buyersagencyaustralia.com.au. Invest with integrity. Welcome back, everyone. Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Product Investment Show with Tom Richards from Manage. Just going through some of those before the break, some tips on on how to maximize uh, the appeal of your investment property, try and get a few more bucks a week out of it and keep, retain uh, and attract better tenants. Now, Tom, uh, there's a press release that was received by the team here uh, on our real estate uh, assets, realestatebusiness.com. And I think it also maybe on smartproductinvestment.com do that. Manage just hit a billion dollars. That's with a B, a uh, billion dollars in transaction volume, mate, that sounds like a really big number. Can you, like for those of our listeners that don't really get what you guys do, can you just give me a quick sort of insight into it? Yeah, sure. So 
typically a real estate agency of old would run a trust account. It means they're taking in all money that needs to come through their ecosystem, whether it be tenant paying rent or owner transferring some money to pay for carpets, bills out to tradies, strata, council, water, all those kinds of things. So all those transactions, and there's a lot of them, will flow through a trust account, which means that that agency is liable for handling this big pot of money. They've got to remember whose it is, they've got to remember where it's going, and they've got to manually do it all. Um, it's very difficult for them. Uh, it's quite time consuming, a lot of admin, a lot of risk, um, a lot of sensitive data stored locally, all those kinds of things. So what we did is we looked at that ecosystem of payments that was currently being run by the agency and we decided to replace the agents part with tech. The overview is still given to everybody. So the agency is still very much apart from an admin perspective in terms of seeing the statements and understanding transactions and approving things on behalf of the landlord. So you don't have to have that interaction as an owner, but you get that internet banking style view of everything that's going on. What that did was it essentially replicated the same payment flows. Rent still starts and finishes at the same spot whether it's going straight to the owner or out to a trade, some of it's going to an agency. But we built this web of digital wallets that allow that process to be automated. And it just shaves a whole lot of admin and a whole lot of risk out of every agency that uses the tech. So the platform is for agencies. It's just giving them a more efficient way uh, to work so they can spend more time working with their, their landlords and their investors to manage their investment properties rather than unnecessary paperwork, which, let's be honest, tech can do most of it these days. Exactly right. But also appealing to new owners too, not mm. just the existing ones. But for me, if I was going to go and sign up for a personal banking account tomorrow and I went to bank A and they gave me all this fancy tech and they said, you can log in anytime, you get your notifications on your phone, um, you can download statements in different formats. Maybe I've got a business account with them. I wanted to go into zero, all those kinds of things. And they went to bank B and they said, oh no, you've got a checkbook and you come into the branch in the city and that's how you, you deal with us. Um, I know which one I'm going to be going with right? because I want that experience. I want that digital experience. I don't want to have to get in the car and use paper and write checks and all those kinds of things. Whereas that's the analogy that is the same as, as our uh, direct payments and trust accounting. Um, it's uh, it's a direct replacement for the old um, and, and a, a fully automated way of doing things now. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Hence the reason why, you know, I like the product so much. It means the, the agency, the property manager is in the box seat to make sure they become an actual uh, an investment manager for the property investor rather than just an administrator. That really works for me. Uh, but but more so uh, considering the competition for trades at the moment and competition for other work on your investment properties uh, through the system, everyone gets paid immediately, uh, including the property investor, may I add. And, and that's something which is a big tick for me. So Rather than that money from a tenant sitting in an agent's trust account for maybe up to 29 or 30 days, it actually sits in my bank account offsetting my mortgage. So it means I'm saving money because I'm paying less interest. Yeah, exactly right. And it's it's become the default in the system now to get instant payments out. Um, you've still got some flexibility in terms of how you get paid. Owners with lots of properties can batch certain transactions together so they don't have heaps coming in, but they might just want one lump sum at the end of the week and a corresponding report. Um, we design it to be fully personalised. So depending on what they're after, they can customise it to suit. Uh, we've got one investor with over 120 properties in his one profile on, on Managed App. And that previously took him weeks to do reconciliations. And now he's personalised his reports, he's grouped them together, he's got different accounts going to different places, it's all automated, and he clicks a button to drag it into Zero or MYOB, whatever accounting software he uses, and it's done. So it gives them a whole lot of flexibility, and then you've got the financial benefits like you mentioned. And if your property manager's not your user managed, can you ask them to? Sure, you can. It's uh, it's usually a difficult thing for a one investor to encourage an agency to change software. So you'd probably be better off looking for an agency that already has it. Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, you could try it with your agency and ask them to offer it. Um, but there are lots of agencies. I mean, managers in every state and territory around Australia at the moment, there is, uh, there, there's no area that we don't cover uh, or we don't have an agency using the tech. So I'm sure you'll find somebody in your local area. All right. Thanks, Tom. Well, appreciate the uh, the insights into uh, property management and how investors can um be better investors through focusing on this. I know me personally, it's uh, when, when when markets are, are red hot, everyone talks about capital growth. When markets are cooling, everyone talks about yield and and you're seeing that take place right now. Uh, we're moving into, we have moved and we will move continue to move into a very different market where investors aren't naturally going to get the returns through capital growth over this period of time. So look towards the other side 
of the balance sheet, and that is how you can generate revenue and uh, keep your costs as low as possible. So uh, we'll keep that. There's going to be a big focus uh, as we move ahead, uh, the rent part of being a property investor, sometimes overlooked and unloved, but let me add, uh, very, very ne- uh, necessary when it comes to amplifying your ability as a property investor and uh, holding on for your properties as long as possible with a minimum cost. You do that well, guess what happens at the back end of it when you choose to sell them all down, you're ahead of the game. Tom Richards, founder, co-founder of Managed. Uh, thanks for your time today, mate. Oh, thank you for having me back, mate. Nice. Well, we'll get Tom back in and uh, uh, we'll get him to come and share some more tips uh, around maintenance, which I think we would benefit from. Maintenance is is an area where I know a manager is doing, a manager app is doing a fair bit of work at the moment. So he'll come in and give us some some top tips on preventative maintenance, but also reactive maintenance. Uh, there's some smart ways to do that. Maybe, Tom, you can, I don't know, invitation, maybe bring one of your um, uh, property managers along for a bit of a chat next time, mate. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And maybe even a trade, uh, how they yep. want to be communicated with. It, it's all part of what the property manager has to connect all these people. Um, so it's great to hear it from all the different types of, uh, of people they have to interact with. All right, mate, let's do that. As soon as you've got a tradie and a property manager, let's have a yarn about it. Uh, Tom Richards Manage. Have you enjoyed that, everyone? Remember, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Thanks for tuning in the podcast. I uh, really appreciate you spending time yourself working on your own investment property, uh, Smart Property HQ, social media where you can find us. And please keep those reviews coming wherever you listen to this uh, the team here get a real kick out of it. We'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property, or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. It's safe to say the property market has been red hot over the last few years, with some of the markets we've selected in 2021 rising over 40% in a 12-month period. It's very likely that if you're a property owner, your property has gone up 20% minimum in value in the past 12 months, and you have most likely accrued sizable equity that can be recycled and extracted to build your investment portfolio. With interest rates increasing, You might be wondering where to invest to maximise capital growth and cash flow in 2022 and beyond. Well, to save you time, energy and guesswork, award-winning author and regular guest on the Smart Property Investment podcast, Paul Glossop and his team at Pure Property Investment have outlined the top 30 affordable suburbs poised for strong capital growth over the next few years with sound cash flow. Grab your free Top 30 Guide to Property Investment Guide today at purepropertyinvestment.com.